Hey guys, this is John with Forward Talk again, and uh, we are here to talk about another one of my favorite preachers with Adrian Sanford. And today we have the uh, special privilege of having Pastor Donald Lance with us on the episode. So the next few minutes is going to be a really exciting time of uh, being able to talk about another one of our favorite preachers. But before we get into that, take the opportunity right now to like and uh, subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell. If you haven't had the opportunity to go over to Patreon and see the various ways that you can support our channel, then please do that. You can start as little as $1 a month. And I know that God has blessed you enough to be able to at least give $1 a month. If not, you wouldn't be able to afford the device that you're watching this video on right now. So um, <laughs> just kidding a little bit, but take the opportunity if this has been a blessing to you to support the channel. All right, we're going to talk about another one of our favorite preachers today, um, Pastor David Fuller, and he has preached some incredible messages over the years. A number of them was preached at because of the times, and we have Adrian Sanford again with us this week. Of course, he is going to be doing a number of these videos with me as we discuss various different preachers. But today we have Pastor Lance with us because uh, Pastor David Fuller was one of his, if not his favorite, all-time preacher. And so uh, we want to have him on to talk about David Fuller as well. I think this might be the first time uh, that Pastor Lance and Evangelist Sanford have actually communicated with one another. Maybe the first time they've met, I'm not for sure. But uh, we're ex ex Excited to have both of them on the show today. So, um, Evangelist Sanford, will you start out and uh, just say a little bit about David Fuller and uh, kind of the impact of his ministry uh, on you and, and your love for preaching? Uh, well, first of all, it's great to be back with you on Forward Talk. And uh, it's also uh, great to be able to meet Pastor Lance. Uh, as far as uh, Brother Fuller goes, um, I have listened to him uh, probably as much and as often as anyone else. And of course, uh, his sermons at Bot, like you've already mentioned, uh, they're all timeless classics. Uh, sermons like uh, Wounds That Never Heal, uh, The Glory of Going On, uh, those are two that stand out to me. And uh, just his uh, command in the pulpit, uh, his way of articulating the thought that he has. And uh, it's amazing because you can uh, almost listen or watch any David Fuller sermon. And uh, the, the, the room is, is quiet, not in uh, they're tuned out, but just quiet as in, in, in anticipation of what he's going to say next. Absolutely. Uh, he just had that kind of a command uh, when he was preaching. And it's always uh, it's always ministered to me, um, his effectiveness and his delivery. And um, it's just that uh, even all these years later, I still tune in to his podcast there at his home church in Texas. And uh, it's it's still still just as great as it was 25, 30 years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. And you recommended uh, and sent the links to a series that he taught on shame that I've started listening to. And uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. All right, Brother Lance, take just a second to kind of introduce your relationship to David Fuller's preaching and ministry. Um, Brother Fuller was a man that when I felt my calling to ministry and, and started preaching, um, early on in my early 20s, he was, uh, from the first time I heard him, then I started trying to, it impacted me so much, I, I started trying to get every sermon that I could from him. Oh, and I've got, a, I've got, a, I guess, a fairly big collection, but um, his preaching helped form me as a young man. Um, if you can have a mentor, that you don't personally know, That's awesome. uh, he would have been that that man to me. I, I I would love to meet him at some point. If I do, I will tell him that he mentored me 
early on in my ministry. Um, not many men that are extremely intelligent and or brilliant can preach to where you know they're intelligent, but they have an extreme depth of anointing and sincerity. Yeah. Yet they can preach to where everybody in the room can understand it, Absolutely. whether educated or not. And to me, David Fuller was that man. You might have to look up a couple of words in the dictionary, but other than that, um, <laughs> his ministry impacted um, me greatly. And um, as um, Brother Adrian said, you can go down the list of the sermons and just his teaching alone, uh, as you said about that series, I haven't heard of that one yet, that um, Brother Adrian sent us. I look forward to listening to it, but his the teaching that I have heard, probably the one that affected me the most was the efficacy of frustrated desire. My, my. Um, again, there's that big word of that, that, <laughs> in that title. Um, the title will preach all he, by itself. <laughs> yeah. And he, uh, he taught that in a day session at Tennessee camp meeting, and I just got the tape from it. I was not there. Um, and I was going through a very difficult time in my life. I had just started evangelizing. I went through the worst trial of my life in that season. And that sermon I listened to over and over and over and over um, because of the desires I had for ministry. And it seemed like I kept getting set back and set back and set back. And he went into David talking about how he was anointed as a young man, uh, but really didn't did not get to express or use or minister in that anointing until until years and years later, but it formed him. Anyway, um, yeah, he, he's just, he, he's a mentor to me from afar. Yeah. And uh, one thing I love about David Fuller is when he got up to preach, there wasn't a lot of nice, nice of these exchanged, not a lot of, of uh, polemic rhetoric and praising everybody on the platform. He just went right to preaching. Yeah. yeah, I love that. The simplicity. he wasn't very political. <laughs> uh, I love the simplicity, uh, the simplicity of that, and uh, some of the uh, some of the messages that stand out to me is uh, when the Lord of the Temple arrives, and revelation for a holy generation. Both of those were preached at Bot. There was also another message that he preached that was incredible that I don't remember where he preached it at, but um, the title of it is Spiritual Eclipse, and it was absolutely phenomenal as well. Uh, Brother Lance sent me a picture of a bunch of David Fuller tapes that, it, that he has that I will attempt uh, when I edit the video to edit uh, that picture into, into, the, uh, into this video so that you can see his collection of David Fuller tapes. But before we go any further, I have one excerpt from one of my favorite sermons of David Fuller. I'm going to play for you guys just so you can hear his voice, uh, hear the kind of delivery and cadence that he had. It was absolutely incredible. All right, here we go. Amen. Just let me throw this in passing. You can take it for what it's worth. This is just Fuller's theology. If you think you're of the ironic priest order and the tithing is your inheritance, you're in the wrong dispensation, baby. This ministry and priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. The only thing the Bible says, you don't muscle the ox. The ox can eat all the corn he wants, but when the ox starts eating all the corn, you need to slay that baby and get you another ox. Well, why aren't you on your feet now? That's another thing about my all-time favorite preacher, Jeff Arnold, is he not only loves to preach, but as you can see in that little clip there, he loves preaching. He loves to hear other men preach. I'll tell you why. We're selfish. We're selfish. We're selfish. My Lord, that gives me chills every time I hear it. But just a phenomenal delivery, powerful delivery, um, and uh, just just a, amazing, um, amazing ministry and preaching. Did anybody mention the glory of going on? Did you say that earlier, Adrian? 
Adrian looks like he might be uh, screen frozen there. Uh, <laughs> I did, yes, sir. Uh, screen frozen for a minute. Uh, Brother Lance, uh, you mentioned uh, the, the sermon earlier. What are some of the other messages that uh, Pastor Fuller uh, preached that, that have been impactful, uh, impactful in your life? Um, the one on relationships at, at because of the times, and I think he actually titled it just relationship. I don't remember the exact title. I've got, I've got that tape. Um, of course, born and bred in the briar patch, which was, <laughs> I love that title too. Yeah, it was amazing. And I think he preached that in, at an evangelist conference. Um, and then the church that God built next door to hell. Wow. Yeah. Um, revelation of a holy generation. Uh, yeah, it just, I mean, goes on and on and on with, to me, not just masterpieces, but yeah, it was just a depth of anointing and conviction yeah. um, all, all the while while you were challenged that, that he delivered. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, uh, he, uh, Marks of the Cross, too, was another one. Oh, yes. Marks Amazing. of the Cross was another one that absolutely, and I ain't going to lie, early, early on, uh, when I was a really young preacher, I, uh, I probably, unfortunately, I'm embarrassed to say, I probably plagiarized about 20% of that sermon. Yeah, <laughs> as, as did I. <laughs> and and preached that, preached that a few times. Uh, but Marks of the Cross was absolutely phenomenal. He took it from Paul's statement that I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And just an absolutely... Um, phenomenal message just his approach to preaching like like uh, pastor land said uh the uh, ability to write a sermon the the ability to craft a sermon uh the the word pictures that he used the ability to to describe a scene uh, in marks of the cross he talked about he talked about that idea a bit about how uh he loved louis lamore books and how Louis L'Amour had his own particular way. He left his mark on literature. And, um, and David Fuller did, did the exact same thing with preaching. He just had a way of crafting a message, delivering a message, uh, and, and with anointing and conviction and passion that was, that was absolutely, uh, absolutely challenging, life-changing, and uh, just just a beautiful display of how to effectively communicate communicate the word of the Lord. Adrian, are you are you back? You froze for a second. Adrian, can you? I believe so. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you now. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, going back to his uh, sermon delivery. Uh, I was telling Brother Lance earlier that Brother Fuller and I actually emailed back and forth a few times uh, a few years ago, and I asked him about his sermon process, uh, his sermon prep, how he gets sermons and, and puts them together. And uh, he said when he was in Atlanta, what he would do is every morning he would go into a, I guess, like a classroom, and uh, he would have this big white board on the wall and he had all kind of ideas written down and uh, he also said he had about six or seven books lined up that he would go to and read at different times throughout the day and uh, he would get an idea for this sermon write it down go take a break come back uh, read something else uh, get a thought for another sermon write it down and so he he all, he told me that he always had more than one or two sermons uh, that he was crafting at one time going on. And so it was it, it was really interesting to see how he approached putting his sermons together. And it, you said he preached a message called the Master Craftsman, right? He did. And yeah. when it come to when it come to preaching and preparing a sermon, he was definitely the Master Craftsman. He nobody could put together that I've ever heard can put together a sermon the way David Fuller can. It's just, 
the ability is unbel unbelievable. Um, Brother Lance, uh, go ahead, talk about it a little more. Um, I remember one because of the times. Um, I'm trying to remember which sermon it was. Um, it might have been building to survive. Huh. If he preached that there and he talked about the building in Atlanta where they got the foundation wrong and until they got to like the 10th floor windows started popping out of it when they would put them in they couldn't figure out what it was um anyway it, if it was that one in whatever message it was he told about three different four different stories um that just made that message amazing and a young man sitting next to me I, that had never heard him a young minister leaned over and said my goodness this guy is an architect he's an accountant he's a <laughs> he's a and went through all the stuff because as when he told the story it it sounded like he was Every the guy that did all you know what i'm saying yeah. uh, and so <laughs> he I, I go back to being a that him being extremely intelligent, but being able to deliver to anybody I had heard, you know, true it is that uh, he loved to read so much that his mother would punish him when he was young by taking away his books that when she grounded him. And he would go to the pantry and get soup cans and read them. Oh. Um, and so uh, hopefully if I get the chance to meet him, I'm going to ask him about that story. Um, another one, if y'all haven't heard, is not enough to make a saint. Have y'all heard oh, that one? Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely amazing. You remember um, the text he used? Yes, sir. Pastor Lance, you remember the text he used? Uh, oh, yeah. Amos, two legs and a piece of an ear. Yeah. Yep. yeah. He said, absolutely. two legs and a piece of an ear is just not enough to make a lamb. Yeah, it was right. Amazing. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, uh, the one on equity, a building to survive. I mentioned that one. The power of one. Oh yeah, um, was amazing. But, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't know of anybody that's impacted my life from just their preaching, not one on one, uh, as far as a relationship with them and counseling and phone calls, lunches, just their preaching. Uh, I did not know I could be impacted by one man for that many years. And it, I'm, I'm telling you the truth before the Lord. Um, he, his preaching got me through a very, very, very difficult time as a young man. Um, and if it had not been for that, I mean, I know the grace of God would have brought me yeah. through, but God used him to do that. And he never knew it, which, which leads me to think, you know, um, how many people are you or I or any preacher impacting, especially today with such great access? I mean, we have people as, as well as uh, you do, Brother Carol and Adrian, uh, no doubt uh, that watches you, whatever church you're at, that watches us online. I've never met. I do not know them. And they watch every Sunday. And, and you know, no preacher can affect everybody, but every preacher can affect somebody. So it just lets us know the power of preaching is not just the message. It's actually mentorship and, and the power of the preaching of the word helps people through things that nothing else can help them through. And sometimes it's done by afar. So to me, I say, preachers, you're affecting a lot more people than you know. Yeah. And, and carrying the, knowing that responsibility is a tremendous, um, is a tremendous weight to carry in that when I approach the pulpit, I approach the pulpit uh, in a way that's respectful and, and communicating preaching in a way that uh, can be a blessing uh, to people's lives that I that I will likely never meet. And just carrying the weight of preaching in such a way, preaching in such a way, handling the Word of God with such care that that it has the opportunity to bless people and not harm them. Amen. Go ahead, Adrian. Another great sermon, if I could add to the list, sure. is um, <clears throat> is uh, every man has his own ladder to hell. Am I coming through good? Yeah. Okay. I haven't heard uh, that uh, another sermon that is actually on that podcast I sent is. Um, Every man has his own ladder to hell. <laughs> oh, wow. And 
and um, yeah, that and also, uh, and I'm not sure the venue that he preached to that is the tragedy of a trivialized life. It was phenomenal as well. And, uh, uh, you know, the list, the list just keeps going and going. 1990 what, Brother Lance? Oh, there we get the track. Oh, there we are. 1994 Texas District Conference. Oh, there's some uh, uh, Larry Smith tape right there. Um, Brother Adrian, did you see that? You That's the one you're talking about, and that's where he preached to that? The tragedy, yeah, that tragedy that, trivialized, trivialized life. I tell Campo Texas, yes, sir. Larry Smith. That's it. So, yeah, those are classics. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I hope that somehow Brother Fuller gets to hear this podcast and um, gets to be able to get a little bit of a taste of how effective his ministry has been and how effective his ministry is still being. I still, to this day, go to YouTube and play his sermons, listen to them. They, they feed me, they bless me. And like, like uh, I said earlier, I am currently working through the 12 part series that he taught on, that he uh, taught on shame there in, in Texas where he is currently pastoring. And, uh, I, I hope he hears and is encouraged by the fact that his ministry has had such a tremendous impact in the life of of people he'd never never even met. Absolutely. Um, Brother Carroll, can I insert one more thing? Sure. For, for information to those that are watching that might want to know the message I was talking about at that meeting, it's called The Point of Beginning yeah. because the time is 1993, and that's where he told all those stories and that young man said, my goodness, this guy is, so yeah. Hey, so another one, uh, another illustration that he used in that message, I'm 99.9257% sure uh, that it was in that message. He used the arch in St. Louis as an illustration. Uh, and and when they built the arch, uh, it, of course the arch goes up in, in sections and panels. He said if, if the, uh, the, the second piece that they had put into the arch had been off by one seventy seconds of an inch. Wow. That it would have been so far off at the top that it wouldn't have met together. Just My. one seventy seconds of an inch. I believe it was fuller in that same message. I could be wrong, but it's yeah. use that as an illustration. In, in that message. The clip you showed earlier was that from when the Lord of the Temple arrives? Yes. Yeah, and Adrian is a uh, we could probably name us well, at least with Jeff Arnold, all you have to do is name a year and he can tell you uh, what the sermon title was for Jeff Arnold or say the title and he can tell you the year. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> for any Jeff Arnold. Maybe. Article. Quick bot sermon. Can you do that with four too, or is that just a just a uh, Jeff Arnold thing? I have more. I have more confidence in the Jeff Arnold sermons at bot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, brother Lance. I don't know if you remember this, but at Winsboro, at Brother Couch's camp meeting one year, uh, you were there, and Jonathan Alviar. Uh, Jonathan Alviar preached, uh, and I know we're not talking about Jonathan Alviar, but he's another phenomenal yeah. preaching machine. Hey, amazing. He uh, he preached a message called What's Right with the Church. And I don't know if you remember saying it or not, but afterwards you, you commented to me that that was David Fuller, like the level that he preached that night, that it reminded you of David Fuller. Yeah, I don't remember saying it, but I remember that message. It was absolutely amazing. That watch right with the church was absolutely phenomenal message. But do, do y'all remember um, again? Um, it, I think it was. Let me see. Relationship. He titled it relationship, um, and he talked about. Um, this was a because of the times message. Also, he talked about. 
his German shepherd that he had bought as a puppy and he spent, I forget how much time every day with it, teaching it to roll over, to fetch, to beg, whatever it was. And at the command of his, just the motion of his hand, <laughs> that that German shepherd would do what it was taught. And he went through all of the details of that, of how that he had built a relationship with that dog to where just a simple whisper or a touch or a, or a motion, that dog would respond. And then he said that I could go out and buy a snake, <laughs> a pet, and it does not matter how many hours a day I spent with that snake. It would do nothing I taught it to do <laughs> because you cannot build a relationship with a serpent. And he said, if you don't have a relationship with God and you claim to be a preacher, you're lower than a snake. <laughs> oh, sorry, but oh my goodness. It's like, okay, just let me go pray now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, so anyway. just so you guys know, we have four minutes and 16 seconds left in this Zoom session because... So far, I've been too cheap to buy the pro version, so it only lets me have to <laughs> But, uh, man, it's been great, Brother Lance. Thank you for coming on and talking with us about David Fuller. Brother Sanford, thank you again for talking uh, about Brother Fuller with us, talking about another one of our favorite preachers. As I said before, the purpose of this series in talking about uh, our some of our favorite ministries uh, is that all really good preachers enjoy really good preaching. Um, and for the young preachers out there that are starting in ministry, um, find somebody, find multiple ministries and multiple men who preach at a high level and, and preach. You don't have, you don't, you don't have to mimic them. You don't have to become a cookie cutter of their ministry. Don't do that. But, but acquaint yourself with fine preaching. Acquaint yourself with, with men who know how to communicate the word effectively, and it will bleed into your life and ministry. Um, and I found out that the some of my favorite preachers are preachers who love preaching, and they are good preachers in their own right because they, they love preaching and they have feasted on high-level preaching. Brother Lance is one of my all-time favorite uh, preachers. I can't tell you how many times I've gone... Uh, to listen to him preach when I was low and down and needed a shot of faith. He's a great preacher because he has listened to great preaching. Adrian um, is, is, has been the best evangelist that we've had uh, preach for us since I've been in Ohio. He's been incredibly impactful and on point every time he has preached for us. God has used him tremendously. Uh, he preaches great content, but also very in tune with the Spirit. And I believe in part the reason why that he has such an effective ministry is because he loves good preaching, great preaching. And um, so if you're going to listen to preaching, take the opportunity to listen to great preaching. And there's not a better place to start with uh -huh. great preaching than David Fuller. Uh, also, if you get a chance, listen to Pastor Lance. Find messages of uh, Evangelist Sanford. These are uh, exceptional examples of preaching as well. And uh, the power of preaching is just unmeasured in changing the lives of people. Real quick, in a minute and 38 seconds, uh, uh, take about 45 seconds, Brother Sanford, and uh, give some closing remarks, and then we'll do the same thing with Brother Lance. Uh, uh, very quickly, just uh, another op uh, great opportunity to be here with you and Pastor Lance. And uh, like you said, uh, you want to hear great preaching, uh, start with Brother Fuller. And uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, we are products of the preaching that we listen to and, and apply to our life. And I've been blessed throughout my life to hear great, tremendous preachers. And um, I just I just love the idea and the concept of preaching. And so uh, there's not a day that I live, but I don't listen to some form of preaching. So right. I love it. <clears throat> and it was, it was great to be back. 30, 40 seconds. We have less than a minute till we shut off. 
Um, also, reach out of the box. Don't have, don't just listen to preachers that fit one mold or run with. Can I just say one fellowship? Yeah. Um, have a have a broad right. range of preachers that you listen to because it's amazing. It's amazing what you can hear that's outside of your box, and it will help balance you out as a minister. Amen. All right, young preachers, go listen to great preaching. Start with David Fuller. Go to Brother Lance, Brother Sanford, Jeff Arnold, other other great preachers.